When you get your soil test results, if you look at your base saturation test, if your magnesium percentage is above 25%, chances are you've got some issues out in your field. What it could be is that extra magnesium is making your soil drain poorly. Maybe it's tying up your potassium or preventing the potassium from getting into the plant at the ratio it should. It's causing soil issues. How can you manage through a high magnesium soil? Okay, when we think about magnesium, it's a tiny little element out in your field. And we look at calcium in comparison comparison, calcium is big. So if we've got soils that are tight and poorly drained, a lot of times we've got high levels of magnesium out there. When you think about clay soils, this is where we think, okay, it's a sticky clay it's probably got too much magnesium in it. And Brian said somewhere in that 12 to 25% range, we'd like to see magnesium on a base saturation test. Well, in a heavy clay soil, we'd like to see that magnesium down closer to the 12 than the 25. Now contrasting that, if we had a sandy soil, we have trouble holding water. We have trouble with too much pore space. We might wanna see that magnesium closer to 20% rather than down towards 12 to get a little bit of stickiness, a little bit of holding capacity for the nutrients in the water in a sandy soil. So as we mentioned, if you're over 25% magnesium, yeah, you've got a big time problem. But on clay soils, you may even want to see that number lower. You may want to see it 12 or 15% rather than 20 to 25%. What it all comes back to, and Darren said it, calcium is a big molecule, magnesium is small. What we want in the soil is pore space. The reason why is we've got to have oxygen. If you don't have oxygen, then everything dies, not just roots, but soil microbes as well. You've got to have oxygen there. So if we have more calcium, it just allows the roots to go deeper. It allows air to go deeper. It's a good thing. So how are we going to change that if we've got high magnesium? It just comes down to let's add more calcium out there. So in our operation, for example, we've had some really high magnesium soils, 40 to 50 percent, and we've flipped that ratio by putting a bunch of lime out there, and it might take 20, 25 tons of lime. Certainly you can do that over a period of years, but I'm just trying to say it's going to take a bunch of lime. Once you do that, then you have more pore space there, you get more oxygen, you get more microbial activity, better breakdown of residue, just a lot of things start happening and over time we get better overall biological activity in that soil. All right now with that calcium, I like that you said lime Brian because if we're below 60 percent on a base saturation test for calcium, lime is where we want to start to try and build those levels back up. Once we're past that, we've got a lot of guys that want to use gypsum and I love gypsum. It's a great product, that's where it's going to be effective. When you get calcium percentages up to 60 or so, then you can start using that calcium sulfate. Now the magnesium will combine with the sulfate. It'll kick the calcium off that molecule and take that sulfate. When you get magnesium sulfate, well that's a chemical symbol for Epsom salt. And Epsom salt is leachable. And you could actually move that magnesium sulfate out of your system if you've got some good drainage underneath. The other thing I forgot to mention on the lime is make sure you're getting a high calcium, low magnesium lime because you're not going to gain anything if you have a high magnesium lime. So just make sure you're having your lime analyzed before you're spreading it out on your field in these high magnesium soils. Okay, don't get us wrong here. Magnesium is very important. It's the center of the chlorophyll molecule. So we need to have good levels of available magnesium. But just because your base saturation says you've got 30% magnesium, that doesn't mean that all this magnesium is available for you. So we've got to get things in balance in the soil. When the soils get so sticky and tight because they're ridiculously high in magnesium, you're going to have a lot of issues in your field. As we've been mentioning, as you build that calcium level up to get magnesium back in line, now all of a sudden everything in that soil starts to function a lot better. Okay, so the question is, what's my return on investment here? How much is this really going to pay? Well, the problem with this thinking is we're looking at the next 50 years. Okay, if you get that calcium to magnesium ratio flipped, we're talking a 50-year payback. I'm not saying it's going to take 50 years to pay you back. I'm just saying you're going to see benefits for 50 years, maybe 100 years, as long as you maintain where you're at. So yes, there's going to be some investment. Like for us, it's pretty inexpensive because we're getting lime for maybe $6 a ton. It's water treatment lime, good quality lime. $6 a ton is no big deal. I don't have any issue throwing even 25 tons out there. It only cost me 150 bucks. Who cares? Okay, so if you've got high priced lime, then you really have to start taking a look at this. And our suggestion is just run some trials on your own farm and then you'll see. But if you don't think that you can flip this ratio, you absolutely can. We've taken some soils and done it on our farm in just a, a matter of a few years and we could do it in even one year if we chose to invest all that money in one shot one time. If you've got a soil that's very sticky and tight, chances are 
you've got too much magnesium, your yep. soil is out of balance. Take a good soil sample and make sure that you have a base saturation test run. Don't just look at parts per million of magnesium, but look at the base saturation. It's the ratio of some positively charged nutrients, and it's going to look at what percentage of the holding sites in that soil are occupied by magnesium. If it's more than 25%, you've got some big time issues in your soil that need to be addressed. Yeah, and one of those things is compaction. We didn't really mention that, but you know, if you've got poorly drained soils, you're going to have more compaction. You're just going to have a lot of issues with all that magnesium. You've got to get that fixed over a period of time if you want maximum yield, maximum profitability on your farm. Another thing that's going to give you maximum profitability is if you control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.